law of Christ. And, and that's one of the ways we can do that. There's times that these people that are in this position, and Leonie can probably relate to this and speak to it better than I can, but there's times that, that they're in this position and they just feel powerless to even carry themselves before the throne of grace. And if you remember in Scripture um, where Jesus is talking about the paralytic, he needed to get to Jesus, and he couldn't get there himself. He had four friends who carried him there. That's how he got healed, was because of what his friends and the faith of his friends, and also the faith of the paralytic, that brought him to that. And sometimes people in this position can't uh, carry themselves, most often can't carry themselves to the throne of grace for them to be set free and healed. And the prayers of those around them, the encouragement of those around them, is, is a powerful tool um, just to, to be there and continue to, to just uh, not run at the first sign of, of trouble or, or uh, a hardship, but to be a, a true friend and, and to, uh, to be authentic with that. So a lot of things there with that. Um, I hope that's helped whoever asked that question there. It's a good question, good question. Um, another one for Leoni in particular here. In the midst of an attack, uh, how, uh, in the midst of attack of the statement or the belief or whatever the thought that comes in your mind that says you are worthless, what truths or promises of God can you lean on? What did you lean on? Were there any promises of God or anything that came to your mind? Anybody else in the panel has anything to add to that? But was there, was there anything that came that you remember? Um, I had a number of scriptures that I carried in a backpack with me. While I was going through recovery, I had this backpack that was full of... Um, things that I could do instead of hurting myself and things like that. And um, and I had written out, a friend and I um, wrote out a whole notebook full of scriptures um, that gave me strength. Um, and a lot of times it wasn't like one specific one that always helped me. It was just being in the Word of God. Um, recognizing the lie is a huge part of it. I mean, huge. When you can recognize that thought process occurring and go, that's not true. And then you say, okay, stop. And what does God say is true? And then just open up the Bible and start reading. Um, And God will make things stand out to you. Um, So I think it's, it's mostly just about seeking him continually. And, and when you're in that, that crisis mode, um, seeking out even other people to, to pray with you. Um, I had a number of people, I, I, again, in my backpack, <laughs> I had a list and phone numbers of people that I could call when I wasn't feeling safe. Um, and, and I kept everything like that written down. And, and when, I would, like when I would identify lies, I would write down the truth so that then when it came back and I'd not be able to remember anymore, <laughs> then um, I could pull that out in written form and go, okay, this is what God told me before because the enemy likes to come in and steal away whatever truth you grasped before. So keep it written down. Whatever he gives you, write it down and keep it with you so that when the attack comes, um, you're not relying on your own memory and your own thoughts because they're not very trustworthy at that time usually. It's kind of a, uh, when, when you describe that, that is the same instruction that was given to the Israelites in the Old Testament about taking the law and binding it on their foreheads and, 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 mm-hmm. and stuff so that they would remember the truths of God. And, and when that lie would come, that there it was, it was right there. And, and they, could, they could recall that. So that, that's, yeah, modern backpack, modern day <laughs> I, example. Yeah, I had uh, all over my mirrors and the refrigerator and walls and everywhere I went, there were scriptures <laughs> posted everywhere, so I would run into it everywhere. All right. Um, let me go with th- this one is for um, for for Kim and Ed and Jason. As Leonie's parents and brother, what signs did you see that pointed to her internal struggles? Um, and then the second part, I know we we put an instruction one 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 question per sheet, but that's all right. I violated it too, so <laughs> we'll, we'll cut grace here. And at what point did you start to grasp the severity of these struggles? So first, what, what things did you see that pointed to the fact that Leoni was struggling? What tipped you off to that? And, and when did you start to grasp the severity of these struggles? Do you recall that? Um, well, even at, a, even at a young age, um, 
like she said, she was fearful. I mean, she would be excessively fearful, you know, and as a, as a parent, just, you know, with the, with the young kid, you, you look at it and you go, okay, this is, you know, you don't know how much of it's a, a severe thing and how much of it's just, oh, that's a child's personality or whatnot. And so sometimes we'd, we'd uh, try and um, not brush it off in the ant, you know, it's not important, but try and make it a lightened thing. You're trying to say, no, look at this. Her, my, her personality and my personality are very similar. We're very overachievers. We're, you know, excessive. We're very, very analytical about things. So sometimes I, I'd approach it from a, an analytical standpoint and say, okay, point A, yes, okay. Point B, yes, well, obviously then point C is, no, that didn't work that way. Um, <laughs> but as she, as she got older, um, the excessive compulsive stuff became overdriving her her um, comment about going into all of her teachers when she was in high school one day be we homeschooled so she was she wasn't at a traditional school through junior high school and she was like I don't know you know how I'm going to succeed in school you know how am I going to do when I get to high school and um, so just off the top of my head, I, th I said, well, you know, just go into your teachers when you get there and, uh, and uh, just find out what it is that you need to do to get an A in the class and, and then do it. You know, my thinking was, was she's incredibly capable, she's very smart, and she's very diligent, and she'll, she'll do it. Well, little did I know that that, that was like putting gasoline on a fire and whatnot. And a as she went through high school, we saw all of the all of the signs of the you know the overachiever i mean we're not i'm not just talking about somebody who wants to be successful we're talking about somebody who says here's successful here's greatness now we're going to start at greatness and we're going to go to perfection to you know or whatnot and a lot of that I can understand. I mean, I have a perfectionist mentality. I, if you're going to do something, do it right. Don't or don't do it at all. But as I got older, I was able to mellow that. But she was driving further and further. Um, as she got in, as she started to get into college, we we I saw it all there, but. It, it's one of those kinds of things. A lot of these things have a, um, are both a blessing and a curse. I mean, somebody who's an achiever can go on to do great things, but it's just like any, any of the gifts, if they're not done, I mean, if, what's the word? Um, yeah, I mean, you can take a strength and turn it into a weakness, you know? I mean, it's, it's like, a knife's edge that you got to be careful not to go over and as she got into college we started to see it and it and it was really really difficult the problem was was she was away at college when she was at Simpson luckily for us she's only a 30 minute drive we live down in Red Bluff but God put a lot of uh, um, people in her life that she had a friend that she had met online that she had been um, chatting back and forth with him, back and forth with him. One day he called us on the phone and said, I don't know what it is. I don't, I can't identify it, but you need to, to, uh, you need to go. You need to go see what's going on. And so we jumped in the car and we drove up to Simpson and, and that's when we found out, you know, that she had, had been cutting herself and that obviously was just God, but um, but it, it, at a young age, I mean, really, in all honesty, this started when she was very little, and um, we tried all kinds of different things. We didn't, especially I, did not realize the severity or the or the. Um, how, how bad the potential for the outcome was because I looked at it and said, she's just a lot like me, you know, I'm, 
relatively stable. I mean, obviously, I got more than my share of problems, as my wife will probably <laughs> attest to. But, um, but um, you know, I mean, I saw the strength side of it without acknowledging the weakness. I mean, the the problem side of it. And I don't know. I don't know what other steps we could have taken when she was younger. I mean, we did. I mean, she did um, go to a counselor a little bit when she was younger and whatnot. I don't know how successful it was, but um, but it but it went very quickly. And I have to tell you, as a parent, it was really scary, um, very overwhelming. Um, especially, you get to the point where you just feel like this gigantic blanket, wet blanket has been thrown over the top of you that's so heavy you can't do anything or get out of it and you're just, and you're suffocating. So, um, but the fact that there was a, a lot of people who came up beside both her and Kim and I um, to take us all through it because uh, it, it was kind of overwhelming. I wish I would have seen the signs, the, the, the potential, the bad potential earlier that we could have maybe taken some other steps, but, you know, she's here now. So, I mean, God, God, uh, that's all God, because as I, as I've, preparing for tonight and looking back at all the things and I'm a um, being an analytical I'm a problem solver I always look at things and say here's a problem define it dissect it take care of the individual part solve it move on I mean that's the way I think of things and something like this it doesn't work that way I mean there's you think you've dissected and analyzed all the problems and the next thing you know you look around and there's 30 other problems that you didn't even have a clue were there um, and for a problem person like me then you're trying to solve 30 things instead of one thing and it doesn't work so um, all of the things that happened to bring her to where she were she is today are all it's all God because it's in spite of all of those things that I did wrong that she's that she's here so but uh you know i mean the signs were easy to recognize i guess probably i just didn't have the training to really realize the severity of the problem soon enough so not that that would have necessarily you know taken care of it because like it's been said you can't you can't uh heal anybody you can't correct those problems I mean it's it's uh, it's too big of an issue so yeah and while you're passing along this is one of the reasons this this is this panel of things here tonight because of the thing you said you know that maybe maybe I didn't recognize the problems and things you know we're, we're sharing this story to, to equip and give tools to to us I can remember when I first heard about this was about um, well, it's been about 10 years ago now when I first heard about this problem, and I had no clue that, that these kinds of things existed, uh, especially the self-injury behaviors. And uh, it, it was it was an eye-opening uh, experience there, those kind of things. Jason? Uh, one thing that I would say is that, as my dad was saying, I think that this is true for most people. You don't realize how bad it is until it's bad. That's just the bottom line. Um, the you know frog in the uh, bowl. You know, turn it up slow. Th like Dad said, there were there were lots of signs, but you could have somebody who showed all those signs and didn't end up suicidal. So you can't make a formula. That's that's the whole point of what Dad was saying. There is no formula. If this, then this. Um, there could be very little.